Okay, uh, hi everyone. So it's SmithyQ from SmithyQ.com, and we're here with the next installment of, well, basically Smithy's Greatest Losses, or this is going to be a series of videos that explore many games that I've lost and some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. Now, in my first video, I talked about basically chess blindness, just not seeing certain things. And I created a database of all my losses, which let me tell you, is a lot of fun to just review. It was like five, 600 <laughs> uh, serious games, you know, correspondence games in which I just lost. Wow. And in the first 20, I noticed the this pattern right here in three and that's so I want to really highlight this uh, because this is something that I really struggled with when I was in the 14 1500 range is uh, my opponent plays what does he play he plays knight b4 in this position and then okay I, don't, I, I play a silly move I take the rook and then he of course checkmates me and so when he played knight b4 this opens the bishop up on the queen He's also attacking my queen, and I ignored all of that. <laughs> uh, so I'm not a very good player uh, back then. But you can see how I just completely miss it. But that's not the only example. Uh, be back up uh, to here. My opponent at, in this position played e3. That opens up this diagonal. I played queen f4, completely missing rook h1. So another example of where I, I saw e3. I thought he's trying to... I Well... I don't really remember this game very much. I'm assuming I saw this. He's attacking here. So I brought my queen back. I'm trying to trade queens, get off the pressure, and then I fell into checkmate. And we got one more. Let's see if I bring it here. This is probably the worst example, actually. Um, here, I'm black. So my opponent, maybe I'll just hit the board. My opponent played f4. And so I took. And we can see immediately what I'm thinking. Oh, okay, after he takes back, maybe I got to check, or maybe I got to check, and then all of a sudden things are going to be whoops. That's checkmate. So I completely missed how taking the pawn allowed the open diagonal to come in. So no, I wasn't a very good player back in the time. But this is a very common tactic. These discoveries, right, because... It's not the piece that's moving that creates a threat, it's something that comes behind it. And it took me a very long time to actually start seeing this consistently. So I wanted to just highlight this. And as I find more examples of where in a very short period of time I'm making the same sort of mistake, I'm gonna keep highlighting in that in these videos. But today, I actually have a game, if I could bring it up somewhere. I don't know where it is anymore. Aha! So in this game, I was black, and I had the unfortunate uh, this to play the Grunfeld defense. What is the Grunfeld defense, you might ask? Well, it is in this book, which was one of about three books on chess that my school library had. You'll see that it's, you can just tell by looking at it, it's extraordinarily old. It was written in the old descriptive notation, and it talked about the Grunfeld. And it's basically said, if you're an aggressive attacking player, this is the opening you play. Well, I'm an aggressive attacking player. In my, I said as I'm 1400-ish rating. <laughs> and so I just jumped right in. I knew absolutely nothing about this beyond like the six moves the book showed. And you're going to see that. And what this game is going to highlight is the importance of the center. Because we'll see that actually. Is that... What the Grunfeld does is it gives white a very powerful center, and the whole idea is that black chips away at it. And so we've got, we can actually see that right here, so we can see how c5 and bishop g7 is putting some pressure on the, uh, the white center. The problem is, this is the only thing I know about this opening, and so I don't play it very well, and this gives white a chance to really highlight how powerful the center is. Um, and there are many things, you know, in chess and in life that you don't realize, you know, how bad they are <laughs> until they start happening to you. And this is what really highlighted it for me is that I could do absolutely nothing in this game because I could do nothing against the center. Let's take a look. So I played queen b6. Sure, okay. No, this is a terrible move. <laughs> Bishop b3. And then we'll see. Because white has such a powerful center, it's hard for me to find good spots for my pieces. I play bishop g4, it gets hit back. I play bishop b6, it gets hit back. And we see the strength of the center. What can my bishop do? It ends up going here, where it's 
taking away a square from this knight. And now this knight can only go here, which is a pretty terrible square. And then as it is, rook b1, my queen goes to a funky square. I actually just lost the pawn. And I still, what do I do? It's so difficult to find a good move. I ended up playing rook c8. My opponent just keeps playing, queen d2. Uh, I don't know what else to do, so I play e6. I'm trying to uh, do something. And let's look what happens. He plays bishop f4, hits my queen back, and then d6, further cementing it. Just look at my pieces. Look how terrible this is. Uh, it's, it's hideous. And uh, I'm just going to zoom ahead for a little bit. I never find any counterplay. I, I just, I'm dropping pieces, and then... Uh, um, and then white is getting ready to do this nice big attack. As you can see here, he just took my bishop. Here's where I resigned. I resigned right here. He just took my bishop because after I recapture, I have to recapture. He's then going to take my knight with check. Then he's going to come here. He's going to checkmate me. And everything is terrible, right? And so I've been suffering this game forever. I couldn't do anything because of white's really powerful center. And here's where I resigned. Because I have to take his bishop. In this position, the only move is to take the bishop. Or alternatively, I could have perhaps played knight to d3 check, forking the king and the queen. Something I completely missed. Uh, so instead of winning the queen, I resigned the game. <laughs> Which is hilarious, of course. Right? I mean, I had I had no business winning this game. I was playing terrible. My opponent played very well until here, because in you know the 14, 1500 rating, you just there's always a chance to blunder, and then I didn't even see it. Oh dear gosh! But this actually highlights something, because this game actually shows um, two lessons, if you will. The first lesson is just those center pawns. This white controlled the center, and I could do nothing about that. If you looked. Um, if you've ever taken a look at my um, Chessable course, Smithy's Opening Fundamentals, it's free. Take a look. Go to Chessable or just search Smithy, whatever. It's on my blog. You'll see there's examples of the center pawns just completely destroying opponents. Uh, this is basically, as far as I can tell, the first time, the first recorded game where that happened to me, where I couldn't do anything because of the strength of the center. And that's important. It's important to learn these chess principles um, and these core chess ideas. But this is something else, because I've noticed in several games, well, basically what happens is once the momentum starts going against me, I really lose my objectivity. I stop thinking. Um, I'm no longer looking for counter chances. And I'm just kind of drifting along. And then I've resigned in many positions where I had no business resigning just yet. Where if I would have looked for more than a second in this position, would I have found this? Well, I don't know. I was a, not a very strong player back then. But I didn't need to resign. And I just do that because, you know, I would, again, I was suffering for such a long time that my first mindset was just, oh, of course I'm going to lose this game. I was no longer thinking. I was no longer looking for the best move. Because if I was looking for the best move... I would have seen, okay, I can't take the bishop, I lose the knight, is there something else? And then that would have been it. But I didn't do that because, I again, I lost my objectivity. And this is going to be something we're going to see again and again and again. Is that one mistake soon leads to another and another and it's just a complete waterfall. And this is something that, um, as I've improved, I've really paid attention to, and I do it much less, but... It's still always there in the background. And if it happens to me, I'm imagining it's happening to just about a lot of people. And it's a very, um, there's actually an expression, you know, in chess, you know, one mistake follows another. And they just, it's something that we really uh, need to focus on. And I'll actually be honest, is um, I only found this check like two days ago when I was reviewing some of these games. And so for 20 years, this game was in 2000, yeah, 2000. Uh, for 20 years, uh, I didn't know that I could have won this game. It's probably better that I didn't win the game because it really, again, highlighted that power of the center. I didn't play this opening again for a very long time because the center pawns are too strong. And so that's that. Um, we're going to have, again, I'll feature more and more videos from my early days and of basically painful losses um, where... I've had to learn something, 
And so we'll see more like this. I might also throw in some Blitz games because, hey, that's more fun than looking at just my losses, but there we go. So hopefully you found that at least somewhat helpful. Maybe this is useful, or at the very least we can laugh at some of my old mistakes. So again, SmithyQ, SmithyQ.com, you know where to find me. Um, stay safe, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well in these uh, strange times. But uh, that's it. So take care, guys. Bye for now.